Rich Eisen here. Do you think anybody, big names, get traded today? I don't think so, Dan. Um, if I had to choose a big name that, that should get traded today, it should be Cam to the, the, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. That would be something that if I was Dallas, I'd, I'd kick the tires on. Um, mm. But I, I just don't see anything like that. It, there's no fantasy football trade in our future over the next 10 hours, I don't think. If you're J.J. Watt, would you ask to be traded without going to the media? No. Right. Would you ask behind the scenes? I don't. I don't think so. Um, I, I. I don't. I don't know. I, look, I don't. I don't profess to know exactly what's in his head. I think he loves that city. I think he loves that town. Um, to answer your poll question, I, I would take Seattle if I were him. I know uh, obviously Packers is his childhood team, but to me, Seattle is exactly what. Um, is, is exactly what he would plug into. You know, obviously when we're looking at a post pandemic, I've never been in a place where somebody's defensive play is directly plugged into the fans and how it actually turns into a momentum changing play quite like Seattle. I've never really seen anything quite like it. And the only thing that comes close to it is when JJ Watt makes a play in Houston, I think it would be a perfect, perfect match it's exactly what they need you even heard you know collinsworth say a couple of sunday nights ago that where's the pass rush this is exactly what this team needs they need the pass rush carlos dunlap maybe um you know uh, a factor but i i would love to see that marriage with jj watt in seattle i mentioned this to peter king yesterday i said the longer the season goes on the less i know because we have all these injuries you're not quite sure if teams are going to be able to play when they're supposed to play each weekend. I guess this has been one big question mark. I, I don't know who is great. I don't know who is really good. I don't know. I know who's bad. Your Jets. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, Dan I, I thought you were soft peddling all these NFL questions to, you know, get me talking, soften me up for the Michigan haymaker that you uh, <laughs> from Ohio are about to deliver. Um, you know, uh, I, I see it coming. I understand you don't normally telegraph your punches, but I definitely have uh, seen you uh, at work for a quarter century and know your style. Um, so this is an interesting way to soften me up. Yes. But yes, the Jets stink on ice, to use the phrase that I heard quite a bit growing up in New York City. They are terrible. They have broken Sam Darnold. They should sit him. I, 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 when I heard that they were giving him an MRI on his shoulder that was so hurt in the game in Denver that he came back into the game <laughs> after leaving it, only to have the Jets even uh, down two scores, uh, against Denver, shoehorn in another dumbass personal foul penalty, just enough to get Darnold back on the field for three useless snaps. I thought that they could use this MRI as cover to sit him down and start Flacco uh, the rest of the year, because as you pointed out uh, in your uh, third hour preamble, that there are teams on their heels um, with one win that could absolutely use Trevor Lawrence and would absolutely turn their current starter into Josh Rosen to continue the analogy uh, for Trevor Lawrence. And the Jets should do that right now. They should say to Sam Darnold, you are great. I think I heard you driving in uh, today to, to the show here. I think Pittsburgh would be an amazing spot for him if Jimmy G is, in fact, uh, maybe banged up to the point where the Niners would want to move on. I think he would be great there, too. And the Jets should send him packing. Um, and give him what he deserves, which is a real opportunity in a franchise that can handle it for him, uh, and go get Trevor Lawrence. Would you rather the Jets didn't win a game the rest of the season? Or they won four? Yes. Oh, I didn't stutter. I don't want to see them win a game the rest of the season. Oh, God, no. What's the point? What well, is the absolute point? So you could so you could feel good about yourself? Well, they did they that last year. Momentum? They screwed up oh, last yeah. year. Right. Well, but there was no Trevor Lawrence in their offering, offing, um, or even, you know, uh, this year's top three picks in the offing. Really, when they started beginning to win again, right? I mean, th there was there was nothing like that. So um, right now they're in a great spot. This kid is ridiculously special, and he would be amazing in New York City. All the people saying, you know, he should stay in school and tell the Jets I'm not coming. The Jets can basically tell him at the combine, uh, you know, we, we got this coach. Um, you tell the enemy to bring Andy Reid's playbook with him or go, go for it. it. It's anybody. It, and it's the Jets' only opportunity to get a coach who would want to come to this franchise. It's, it's a perfect situation. 
that they cannot screw up with a single win over the next eight weeks, Dan. He's Rich Eisen, the Rich Eisen Show. You can find it on Peacock right after this show. And, of course, he is the NFL Network host. Which should extend or expand playoffs just for this season, college football or the NFL? College football right now. I, I, I don't understand why they don't do it. This is a perfect opportunity for whatever politics has been preventing them from doing the right thing. An 18 playoff is what we should see every year, Dan. I mean, you know there's a team that's fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth that has an opportunity to catch fire. We, we also know that there's a team that could be fifth or sixth that deserves to be in the top four. You know, you're already seeing now, you know, I'm sure you're talking about the Clemson Notre Dame game that's on NBC this weekend. Um, that you're already hearing, like, well, Notre Dame beats Clemson. Well, you didn't have Trevor Lawrence uh, playing. Well, uh, uh, Clemson beat Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame couldn't do it even without Trevor Lawrence. Like, it's going to be cut either way. That uh, is kind of a no-win situation for Notre Dame. And uh, we should remove – I know it's it adds a certain drama to this weekend because there's only four teams. But expanding it to eight, see how it goes. I think baseball showed – the expanded playoffs were entertaining this year. Yeah. Um, and it had a March madness type feel when it was a first pitch at one. And then it kept cascading all the way throughout the day for like four straight days. I, I think college football should attempt it. Since this is the day to vote you being a Michigan alum and you oh had to gosh. vote oh, wow. Jim Harbaugh at no. the end of the year, Oh my God. You say, Hey, let's re-sign him. Or we say, thank you. Nice parting gifts. This is the way you're framing the question. Yes, I am. This is the framing question. So I'm at the the polling place yes, that you doesn't are. exist, and the item, the referendum on the on the. On you the, have your lever, pull it. Do I say what? Do you want do Harbaugh to him, stay or, or go? Yes, I want him to stay. How does that sound? I know it has not been at all a successful run in terms of national championships and big 10 championships and beating <laughs> Ohio state. I understand Other than that. it looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad. Um, and it is frustrating. It's very, very frustrating to go through Saturdays like this. It's painful. You lost to, to Michigan Saturdays state like at home. I'm very well aware that Michigan state team that, that turned it over seven times against Rutgers did not show up in Ann Arbor on Saturday, Dan. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest that they, they, they played mistake free football, which is kudos to them in playing a rivalry game that I wish my school had won in a manner that we saw Michigan state pull it together. Okay. And you can, you can blame the coach, but who am I, who am I hiring? Who am I hiring? Am I hiring P.J. Fleck? I'm hiring Matt Campbell. I mean, who am I hiring just for the sake of it hasn't worked out with one of those boys and is my first quarterback to you move You can't Michigan? find a quarterback. When's the last time Michigan had a truly dangerous, impressive, first-round talent quarterback? I think they have one right now, actually. Oh, I really do. I think he's limited. I really do. No, 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 no. I, I, I really do, but it's also his second start. That's the problem. Like uh, to me, the question I'm going to have, okay. and I already have, is why didn't this kid have any run last year? Certainly, when Shea Patterson was having those two back-breaking turnovers per game yeah. that Michigan couldn't afford, you know, I, I, I'm, I know, you know, uh, everyone wants blood, but honestly, who, who would I hire? I, I'll, I'll flip it to you. Like, who should Michigan? But go are you get? satisfied if this is going to be status quo because it's been status no. quo? No, I'm not. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Like nine and um, three is, you know, that's nice for a lot of colleges. But I know I am not satisfied. I do not like every single time Michigan plays that I have a pit in my stomach and I look down at my text and I see every Ohio State friend of mine giving me like the googly eyes emoji. Like, are you seeing this? Like, yes, I am seeing this. I am watching this. It stinks. It is not a lot of fun. Um, and I, you know, and I don't understand how Michigan is actually favored at Indiana. And I heard again driving in today. You called that a sneaky game. It is not sneaky. I just, I'm not. It's not sneaking up on me. It's not in. It's not in my rearview mirror. It's right in front of me. I saw how they have played. They are inspired. This is going to be again one of their Super Bowls. And Michigan does not play every week as if the opponent is playing them in their Super Bowl. And you can chalk that up to coaching. I just don't know who the alternative is. Who's Fritzy, the person that I am hiring? Fritzy to almost texted you on Saturday. And, oh, no. And I said, and, and so he he texted <laughs> no, me to say, should I text Rich? And I go, no, 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 no. 
Don't. We, we've done First that all, once before. I appreciate you being the human shield for Fritzy's <laughs> uh, inanities. I appreciate that, man. Um, you know, I, I, what, Fritz, if, at what point, Fritz, were you thinking about texting me? Was it right when when it was on the line, uh, when Michigan needed to, to, to score in that two-minute drive that took 19 hours to, oh. for them to actually pull off? When was it? I was just uh, going to check in with you like Sunday night after the uh, Broncos pulled off that comeback over the Chargers so you couldn't get back at me about Denver. And once no, they got that funny. last second touchdown, then I was No, gonna... I wouldn't. <laughs> First of all, Todd, I don't take any enjoyment in anything that you find distressing. The only person I do that with is McLovin. <laughs> and I love going back at him on his tweets that make no sense like, how many Super Bowls have actually had Pro Bowl wide receivers on them? Not many. That means wide <laughs> receivers don't mean anything as if all pro, uh, it wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't Pro Bowl, it was all pro wide receivers, as if that is the only metric by which a quality receiver is measured in being a championship quality. Like Tyreek Hill, the only guy who could make that route uh, in the Super Bowl last year look as beautiful as it did. Yes, McLeod. He wasn't a pro, it was an all pro. Bowl. Yes, McLeod. It was I an all pro. I know a team that could use some all pro receivers and they play in Ann Arbor. That's all I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> here's, here's what I will handle. I will handle Dan giving me crap because it literally we are working on our second quarter century of that right now. So I can handle that, especially with him from the state of Ohio. Deep down, Dan, I don't I don't you do enjoy Michigan's um, misery, right? Deep down the, the Ohio. No, the Buckeye in you like I used to. Bit, I used bit. to. I used to, I felt sorry for Michigan when I was at the Ohio State game a couple of years ago. Like I felt sorry for them. Which one was that? The 60 burger or the yes. one with the fourth down that JT Barrett did not actually get? <laughs> no, it was the, the 60 60 points they gave up. Oh, I felt geez. sorry for them. I want I the that. I want the I want it to be a rivalry. No, I I, I would so would I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what I, hurt I, more? Michigan State I, or if you lost to Ohio State? Or the Michigan State loss? What hurts more? Oh, Ohio State. Are you no, kidding me? No, you, you, you should expect to lose to Ohio State. No, we don't expect. No, no, no. You should. We should. No, we should. No, we should not. Yes, no, Michigan not. State. You lost to Michigan State at home. It's not. A, I, I'm, again, aware of your that. Little and I'm brother. willing to take it from you. Your little I will not brother. Take it, I will not take it from an Ivy Leaguer. <laughs> in foot, college football, I will not accept that. Okay. This aggression will not stand, Dan. It will not. Paulie, do you have a question for Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> Rich, are you this glad you came on? Are you glad you came on? Who wants a piece of me? Are you glad you came on? Of course. Okay. I always enjoy this. Uh, Seton, do you I have a question for Rich Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll let him go. Okay. All right. No, no. His awesome wife does the voiceovers for my program. So it, we're, we're, we're a Seton friendly family. Um, so but does Paul, you got nothing? Nobody? I'm just glad you came on, Rich. Good to have you back. <laughs> but who's, uh, who's, yes, McLovin. Does Rich know that Rutgers beat Michigan State? I just wanted to make mm. sure that that was on the. Yeah, he did mention that. Yeah. He did mention that. Uh, who's on the show coming up? Uh, we have today uh, Malcolm Jenkins, um, who is going to be covering Antonio Brown. Rick Stroud to talk about the the Bucks uh, victory and taking on the Saints. Scott Violi for a little bit of a conversation for trade deadline and uh, Ron Rivera, Riverboat Ron will be awesome. on today. Awesome. Tell everybody in the building we said hello. Is anybody left Every in the building? Everybody. <laughs> we're socially distant. <laughs> okay. There's not many people left here, but, uh, yeah, but right. we're here and, uh, and I look forward to uh, being on after your show, Dan. Thank you, buddy. That's Rich Eisen.